Hello, my name is Elizabeth Martinez. Welcome to the Sunday morning service for Victorville United Methodist Church and the First United Methodist Mission of Barstow. We're glad that you could spend some time with us. We pray that you're well and would like to encourage you to share this video with anyone that may not have it easily accessible. You can find all our videos on our Facebook page, United Methodist Church of Victorville, or on our YouTube channel, Victorville United Methodist. You can also find our service in audio form by calling 760-245-2529. God bless you. just cleaning up a little mess I have here. You see, I dropped my box of greeting cards and now I'm trying to reorganize them because I need to send out some cards to some people I've been thinking about, like a thank you card to the dentist for being so patient with me when I had to have some work done this week and a get well card to a friend who broke her wrist and I want her to know that I'm hoping for a quick healing for her. You know, I even have cards that just say hi, or just cards for checking in with someone who I know is going through a difficult time. You know, I think it's important that we share with others that we love them and are thinking of them, but it doesn't do me any good to write it all down unless I actually send the message so they receive it. You know, sending messages, thoughts and feelings that are on your heart was something that was talked about in this week's Bible lesson no, they weren't talking about actual greeting cards in the post office because that didn't exist then. But James, the brother of Jesus, was talking to the early Christians in Jerusalem about how important it was to share with God what's on our heart. He was talking to them about prayer and praying in faith, knowing that God is powerful and can help answer our prayers. Well, here. Let me read this week's Bible lesson to you, and then we'll talk a little bit more about sending what's on our heart to God. This week's lesson is from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? He should sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Well, 
Jean was, was very confident in the power of prayer and the power of our God that he can heal and, and uh, give good protection and help when we offer those prayers up to him. You see, he wants us to share what's on our heart. He wants us to ask him for his help and his guidance and his love. It doesn't do us much good to keep those things to ourselves. Kind of like my letters, they need to be sent and our prayers need to be sent to God. So what does that mean for me this week? Well, definitely going to finish cleaning up my cards and make sure that I send the messages that are in my heart to people that I care about. It's important he mentioned how we need to pray for each other and love each other. And those prayers will help bring healing. But the most important thing I can do this week is to make sure I pray to God to spend time every day thanking him, asking him for guidance, asking him for healing and wisdom. God wants that relationship with us. So we need to make time to share those messages, and he will share messages with us. So I hope you have a great week. Sending love to everyone you care about. A letter from your long-lost brother in Christ just came in the mail this week. It is addressed to all of us. He is our brother, James, and he says, Are you hurting? Pray. Do you feel great? Sing. Are you sick? Call the church leaders together and pray and anoint so they can anoint you with oil in the name of the master. Believing prayer will heal you and Jesus will put you back on your feet. And if you've sinned, you'll be forgiven, healed inside and out. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The power of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Elijah, for instance, human like, just like us, prayed hard that it wouldn't rain and it didn't, not a drop for three and a half years. Then he prayed that it would rain, and it did. The showers came and everything started growing again. My dear friends, if you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them. Get them back, and you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. Your brother, James. Well, you may recognize this letter as a modern version of the ancient texts from Jesus' dear brother, James, defender of our risen Lord. Today is our last Sunday in this series where we have been taking in his wonderful wisdom. James puts a profound ending to his message, one that is meant to keep community strong and bound together in love. A message on prayer that, that's powerful enough to transcend time and place and transform all the hearts and souls that give it merit. I charge you with this task to take what it says here and make it come alive in your life. You will never regret it. This letter deserves and describes what a real community for Christ looks and feels like. 
It has the possibility to inspire us to be more than a group of people who share a belief in the same God, to a family who truly shares a wisdom from above. James wants us to claim a oneness that keeps us to, equips us to be able to survive anything. A unity that must be grounded in a pure awareness of the love and care that naturally results from living as the family of God. This has been my prayer all through COVID. And still in this difficult and long time of returning to church, returning carefully to our faith community. Now is the time to set aside our ego tripping or our intellectual showing off of ideas and make a solid attempt to be real and authentic and to share love as God's family. Because James says this and only that will produce a life of everlasting faith. It is a real God-inspired, all-for-one and one-for-all way to live. That's what James wanted for us today, a man with a vision from 2,000 years ago, still powerful today, the brother of the Holy One of God who did not want us to miss out on the best life can offer from the God of all creation the brother of Christ wanting us to feel like he is our brother too and loved us so much from way back then, enough to give us his best advice for being family with God. He gives us a reality check that the families of God took to heart because only working together can we help each other and be able to help the ones who are not part of the family yet. So this letter is from our brother whose mission is to share practical advice. We all know that life is a roller coaster and we understand that now better than ever. We never imagined we would be persecuted by a global virus, but even before COVID arrived on our path, life is full of highs and lows. It is complicated and things are always happening that we cannot control. Life is and has always been full of grief, misery, sickness, ugly family and social situations, financial pressures, and the hate that is flavored by all of the isms. You know the saying, Life was not meant to be easy, but God never meant for us to go it alone. So take this letter as instructions on how to live it with the right tools for the right task. How do we do this? How do we see our way out of the mess we are in? Well, it is simple, too simple. You may miss it, so don't. B, the caring, and loving family of God respond to life as we know it with prayer, with praise, and with being there for each other. Touching prayers of holy souls, making known the power and the hope that is ours as his family, and do so all in his holy name. Most importantly, remembering always, we are his family. James is centered on creating and strengthening community for Christ, being family that embraces and holds one another up. When you are in a group text, you respond as part of the group. You are one of the many and you belong. And that is how we are supposed to live life in every context. When you are one of many, you stop seeking your independence because the love of many in the name of Christ is just too powerful to let you go. 
James tells us to call for the elders when you need prayer and to be embraced in God's love. The force we need is always found in the family of God. We empower each other for the power he alone can give us. So put that power to good use. The beginning and end of our brother's letter is all about prayer. In his first lines, he says, if we lack anything and need wisdom, we go to God in prayer because God will respond openly and wholeheartedly. Here in his final words, he keeps on with that same amount of trust in the power of prayer, adding how it is the prize that saves and raises up the sick. And the award we get from community prayer is that it has the power to summon the forgiveness of our sins. Really looking at it in this light, we realize that when we use prayer in our life, like James says, that is when we experience prayer as a resurrection of our faith. When we as a family of God put it to the task, it has it is like recharging our faith batteries. When we pray as one for the ones in need, we become a vital force of for God in this neighborhood. So prayer is our daily nourishment that maintains the active faith community as the body of Christ alive and kicking. In this moment, as we sit here, we can try to feel our heart beating and imagining our life pumping through us as our blood nourishes our body parts. Now that is how our prayers keep each one of us alive. And our prayers for one another are also like the oxygen that feeds and gives life to our existence as a church. To James' prayer is for community and from community and is expected to be a faithful discipline that empowers community. But for him, prayer has to be honest and open, founded in confession. Twice, he charges that confession should be to one another and that we should pray for one another. That is the only way that the promised healing is going to take place. This is his recipe to bring healing to our community. Such prayer exercised within and on behalf of the community has power. James says it is effective. It is effective because it is exercised within the context of a community endowed with God's gifts in creation and because it belongs to ones who have been forgiven and empowered by the implanted word of promise in Christ Jesus. My question is, do you believe it? In James's language, it is the prayer of ones who are righteous. My question is, do you believe it? James calls us to heal the community, not just the individual, or rather he, we heal the individuals by making sure that they know they have a place to belong, a place that cares for them, a place that wants them, a place that honors them, but that expects them to come back to Christ for the good of the community at large. James illustrates for us through the story of Elijah how powerful and real prayer is. The power of prayer is not without its stories in the old tradition of the people. We are strengthened when we participate in ways to add our own stories and our own experiences to the rich ongoing tradition that confirms with conviction and confirmation the power of God's gifts to bring salvation and healing to the community of faith. When we gather for Bible study or fellowship time or any chance we take to share with one another, we have a chance to share these stories and we feel God's presence at work. Our extended family 
for many is this our church family. We are a family of faith. We are united by God. We are God's family, and God's families of faith need to commit to God and to one another and continue to care for one another. This includes those who are at risk. James acknowledges in in 519 with an honest recognition that there will be some who will wander from the truth. Each of us can testify from our own personal and communal experience There is need among the community for those who care enough to turn them around and bring them back. We need to know that such efforts of bringing back a wandering brother or sister are worth the effort because in them and in their movement of recommitment, we can know that God's salvation is at work in all its actions of caring, sustaining, and healing one another, the faith community is bearing witness to the fact that God's work of salvation continues in the involvement and actions of a caring community that exercises its actions with confidence in the name of Jesus. So don't just sit there. Be there for one another. Pray for the ones in your pew today who are sitting with you in your room today. Pray for your pastor. Call the ones in front of you this afternoon and call or text or email your pastor with a prayer and hope for unity in our church. James wants more than anything that we act like an authentic church founded on Jesus' words and deeds. In order to do that, we need each other to keep on the right path together, walking with the one that leads us to true freedom in perfect unity with Almighty God and with this faith community. We are Christ's body on earth, loving and caring for this little corner of God's world. Amen.
thank you for being with us throughout the service. We hope that you were able to find it inspiring. If you would like to make a donation, you can mail it to the church address, 15150 La Paz Drive, Victorville, California, 92395, or 404 East Mountain View Street, Barstow, California, 92311. You can also make an online donation through our church website, churchonlapaz.com or vvumc.org. Remember, you can also listen to our service by calling 760-245-2529. We thank you for any help that you can provide as we're trying our best to do what we can in these trying times. Until next time, God bless you.